Hi everyone, my name is Kat and I'm here at CES and I am at the Texas Instruments booth where we're gonna learn together what the different tech advancements coming up are for TI. CES is an annual trade show held in Las Vegas. This event hosts presentations of new products and technologies that are coming into the consumer electronics industry. First up, we're gonna learn about driver monitoring and the future of intelligent systems in your own vehicle. What I'm gonna show you today is our driver monitoring and occupant monitoring demo. Uh, based on a Citara MPU AM628 device, which is an ARM Core Plus mm -hmm. Analytics processor. Okay. Come on with me. It is a one-top demonstration that is based on a SmartEye. That's our partner. So this is your SmartEye module that we are going to use to demonstrate this capability. So what you're looking at today is uh, just the driver monitoring aspect of it, very, very entry level to showcase how attentive a driver is mm -hmm. in a car, right? So the green lines that you're seeing there is uh, the gaze detection. It's monitoring your gaze to see how attentive on the road you are. What if they're wearing sunglasses? You still can detect Really? It. Yes. So I'm going to go into the occupant monitoring mode here. And if you see, this is what occupant monitoring is, right? It is determining how many occupants are in the car. Now, this is the monitoring piece of it, right? Uh, again, since it's only one seat here, we are going to do the driver monitoring, but it is very well capable of doing the front passenger monitoring as well. And these little icons that you see here, the first one is actually showing you that my hands are not on the steering wheel. But if I see here and I'm holding the steering wheel in the 10 to 2 direction, it immediately lets go of the warning signal. The second one here is for posture detection. So ideally, you would want your driver to sit straight. But if your driver is falling asleep at the wheel, et cetera, right, what do you want to do? Like, I try drifting. If the driver is talking on his or her cell phone, that's what it's showing. That's the warning that you will get. And we see a little phone. Yes, and you see a little phone here. And the side is part. accurate as well. Exactly. If you have a water bottle, you're drinking, you're eating, it's also going to show that the driver is distracted. What do we do with this information? Well, that is up to the manufacturer to decide what they want to do with it. If we want it to simply be a warning that pops up somehow in your vehicle, or if we want the vehicle to actually do something about it, maybe the driver is falling asleep and maybe the car is detecting that it's veering off and maybe going into another lane. Well, maybe if this vehicle has a higher level of autonomous driving, then it can help us steer us back a little bit into course or I don't know, I mean, maybe if, if it detects that the driver is either under the influence or sleepy or whatever that may be, um, it kind of takes over and just gets you out of the way and parks you safely. That's definitely up to the manufacturer and it'll be really interesting to see how this kind of technology helps drive this industry forward. Yes. We were just having a very casual conversation as engineers do, and he ended up telling me some really interesting things. So I said, get the camera out, we're putting a microphone on you, and we're talking about this so everyone else can hear what he was telling me. Can you tell us a little bit about what the potential applications can be of us monitoring the people within our vehicle? Sure, the first obvious application is child left behind. You know, we, we see this in the news all the time yeah. that you don't want to leave your child behind over here, and the camera can monitor the background seats and tell you that they, oh, you have left some somebody behind right the other use case that's really important is safe airbag deployment right as you're saying kids can be very rambunctious and yeah. they're moving around in the back seat and sometimes airbags have to be deployed in a particular way to minimize maybe the injury also yeah. to the passenger in the back seat and that's what camera based systems can do they can give you a very good picture of what's really happening in the back seat and then you can use that information for safe airbag deployment. The camera is like the eyes of the vehicle and the processor that we make is the brain, right? So once the camera gets the input of what's happening around it, the processor can you, you can have make more intelligent decisions inside the vehicle for say bag deployment mm -hmm. or maybe loosening the seat belt in case you know the contacts right. in a different way so that there's no injury to the person. Yeah. Next up, let's learn about radar technology and satellite architecture for your vehicle. So what are we seeing? So here we have three demos for radar. Uh, we're launching our new AWR 2544 product uh, on Monday here at CES. And so what this is, it's a uh, radar chip dedicated for satellite architecture. So satellite architecture is a way to process data together in the vehicle to improve autonomous driving models. Okay. Uh, and then secondly, we're collaborating with Zendar for our next demo. And what this shows is how we have multiple radar sensors that can be used 
uh, and process data together to get a LiDAR-like performance at a much lower cost. Mm -hmm. So think of a, a LiDAR sensor that would be on the top of the vehicle. You can take multiple low-cost radars, process the data together, uh, for, to achieve the same level of performance. Okay. Finally, here we have a park assist and kick to open demo uh, using three different radar sensors. So the idea is that we're repurposing two uh, 29, AWR 2944 corner radar sensors mm -hmm. with a new low cost, low power module we debuted uh, in July, the AWRL 1432. And so what this shows is how uh, those three modules working together can track people as they walk across the bumper. So if you wanna walk across the bumper, we can see how you're being tracked as you go all the way across the bumper while also integrating the ability to do kick to open. Go here and kick, kick to open. I know it's technology that is at least already available, but not in this way. Exactly, so kick to open is a feature that's kind of been around for a long time. OEMs use different ways to make it happen. I'd say the predominant way is uh, capacitive sensing. Mm -hmm. Capacitive sensing is very, very poor performance. Uh, I think if people have capacitive sensors on a car, they'll tell you it never works. It doesn't work in the snow or in the mud. Oh, okay. Well, radar is a much better or much more robust sensing modality to make that mm -hmm. kick happen. So think about when you carry lots of groceries from the grocery store, walk out to your car. You don't want to put your food on the ground. Well, instead of having to reach for your keys, you can just yeah, kick to just... your trunk and opens it up, put the groceries in. Very simple, kind of hands-free access to your vehicle. And something that another engineer was telling me yesterday, and maybe you can add on a little bit more, was that this can actually be trained to detect different types of movement. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the typical kick that we know about, but for someone that, for example, maybe has mobility issues and there's particular movements that are maybe a little more difficult for them versus others, it can be trained to detect a different style of movement. Exactly. Multiple kick detection uh, paths can be used to open it up, right? Everybody's going to kick a little bit differently depending on how tall you are, depending on if you're left foot, right foot, what your natural motion is, right? Some people might kick out, some people might swing. Uh, so the chip can uh, be used to say, oh, this is what the driver likes to use and adapt to that over time. Lastly, we'll be learning about algorithms that could help us predict our vehicle's battery life. So what are we looking at here? This is like a message or kind of a DI wireless BMS readiness. It's a live demo where we took three RC cars and we have actual lithium ion battery inside that. We connect to our cell monitor. It's a wireless cell mm -hmm. monitor. We report this to the main uh, main board. Which this is what we have right here. So here. Yeah. So we have a battery control module here. So we, we have a, a, a cloud-based SOC, SOH algorithms running. So we report this or whatever data collected from here, run a algorithm on top of that, send it over CAN, and this will send to the cloud, and cloud will be running and showing this. You can see here, parallel. So the current consumption is increased, voltage is dropping, the SOC is coming down. And so what we can see here is the state of health. We see voltage, current temperature, and the state of charge. And we have it um, pretty much in real time. We can see here. Yeah, this is the same time now. So 349. Yeah. Wow, this is really cool. So on this section over here, I came by yesterday and I was learning about how we can actually use some of this information to develop certain algorithms that are going to allow us to understand a little bit more in depth the state of health of the battery. Maybe when it's no longer usable, when did that happen? How many cycles did it go through? And how does that compare one battery versus another that might be essentially identical, but their performance wasn't? That's correct. So if you see from a different angle, right? So we bought an uh, EV. Uh, the battery is very fresh, mm -hmm. everything is good. We don't know what will happen after five years or two years. Right. So this is a fleet analytic uh, demo. It's a digital tin of the battery using A and ML. This predicts what will happen uh, in a year or in a six months. So is there any possible risk right. running this vehicle? So this collects the data, whatever data coming there. So I've taken one vehicle here, for example. So see here, this is the state of health. So if you normally uh, with the normal algorithms this the the graph will be linear mm -hmm. but with this algorithm with all this machine learning it's realistically showing it is actually oh. 4k instead of 6k and i mean that's a pretty big difference yes also you see risk what is the state of health how many cycles left 
so in case of like okay we have potential uh, over temperature the battery life is coming down or due to my driving style or the user's driving mm-hmm. style battery is draining fast or some issues are happening all these things can be analytically shown and customer can use this for example they can f- go for an insurance uh, update or something since right. i have some issue coming in the past right okay and just for a little bit of context for everyone that's watching us um we have here the state of health and we have the percentage we're obviously starting at 100 and then here we're going down to 80 for below 80 percent of these batteries will be removed and put into some other applications in the shell or some kind of application for us with this algorithm they can upfront come to know okay my battery is going to die by in a month or in a two months so they can prepare so they can predict that and prepare yeah, okay exactly that concludes our video thank you so much for watching if you have any questions for me or for the engineers feel free to drop them in the comments and stay tuned for our next video coming up soon see ya